Hello, I'm in Aux, Switzerland, in the former town of Augusta Raurica. Uh, I'm so happy to share this with you today. It's my first stop on a week-long tour through Roman Switzerland. Right behind me is a theater from roughly 180 AD, and throughout this town there are many items to see, some uh, reconstructions, which the theater behind me mainly is one, but others um, better preserved. Plus there's an amazing museum, so let me show you around town. The most impressive monument is undoubtedly the Roman theater. It was built several times, and in the last version, it had a capacity of about 10,000 spectators. The rows of seating are reconstructed from sandstone. There are still substantial portions of the outer wall, although stones were removed over many years. Now, this theater seats about 2,000 and even holds a Roman festival every summer. This diagram shows the three theaters built on the site. Interestingly enough, the second one was a semi-amphitheater. Moving over to the Lapidarium, we see copies of various Roman stones, including tombstones, inscriptions, and milestones. The inscription on the tombstone on the right says, to the mains and the eternal remembrance of Eustatia, the sweetest wife ever lived, 65 years, Amatus, who was her husband, set this in stone. The tombstone on the left, found in Cirencester, England, is from a cavalry member originally from the town of Augusta Raurica. This is part of a water fountain. Walking along the museum under the colonnade, you could continue to the Roman sites after the Lapidarium. With the back to the theater, one goes up this wide staircase to the top of the Schönbühl Hill with a temple. This temple was built around 70 AD and dedicated to an unknown deity. It was quite large and had a double columned hall around it on three sides. In 50 AD though, this area consisted of a few small structures surrounded by a wall. From the top of that hill, you could look back and have a wonderful view of the theater. And that's where I actually shot the introduction to this very video. The next stop is a recreated bakery at the foot of the retaining wall below the temple. This reconstructed Roman bread baking oven is used for workshops. There were various shops in the same space, and these all had a second story. Above was used for warehouse purposes. This is a reconstructed mill that can grind wheat into flour. Next, we move to a multi-story tavern, which included a shop, a workshop, and living quarters. Various objects were found here, including an oven, statuettes from a domestic shrine, and ceramic vessels from the upper story. To get to the next part of the ruins, one has to walk around the back of the theater. Now we've reached the Forum, which was the center of the civic life of the city, and it included monumental buildings. This reconstruction shows the height of the main temple in the Forum. In ancient times, people sacrificed at this altar, which is a reconstruction of the actual altar that was found in 1990. Next to the Forum is a collection of architectural elements found around town, including columns and capitals and carvings. Now we are walking along the retaining wall of the Basilica, which was a huge three-aisled construction used for administration and courts. However, the actual building uh, does not survive anymore. The Roman stonework is quite impressive, and in some areas, the retaining wall is almost two meters thick. In the ruins below a house, one can see a hippocost, which was used to heat the floors. 
This bathhouse next to a busy road was built around 100 AD. Behind it is an artist's representation of how the rooms would have looked inside and out. Next, we go inside the so-called subterranean well house, which is completely preserved. The well shaft is 11 meters deep and was built around 80 AD. This is a copy of a pillar found in a Roman insula, and it has a very detailed carving of the deity Victoria. We now go back through the theater on the way to the museum. The on-site museum is different than museums that one finds in most other Roman ruins. It mainly consists of a Roman house that was recreated to show how the Romans lived at the time with some original Roman objects. This is the main dining room where the participants all eat while reclining on the beds. This room is a colina or a domestic kitchen. And here are some replicas of kitchenware. This is a view looking into the small garden. This shows a tub built into the cold bath of a Roman house. Additional Roman ruins on display show the underground heating system of another room in the bath. In this view of the lovely courtyard, one can see several oscilla, which are thin marble discs that contain reliefs on both sides. This reconstructed Roman bedroom even contains a weaving loom. The residential reconstructed rooms have finished, and now we go over to the room showing commercial aspects. Here we see a blacksmith at work. And here a woman in a butcher shop is making sausages. This is a collection of Roman knives with modern wooden handles, and also there is a cow bone showing butcher's marks. Another view of the blacksmith and butcher at work. In the side view of shops, one can see a black and white mosaic that was taken from the central bass and placed there. This is a reconstruction of a Roman fast food and drink counter for the passerbys. And it's interesting because it includes a household altar on the left. This is a reconstruction of shelves and amphorae, which were large vessels that normally held wine, olive oil, or fish sauce. This is a reconstructed wooden wagon that would have transported wealthy Romans across long distances. This is a third century bronze base with a mouse. On the left is a padlock with an iron chain, and on the right is a door key of bronze and iron that could have been used for the first temple that we saw. These are blue makeup pigment balls. Now we are at my favorite part of the museum, which is the treasure hoard. It was found through construction works in 1961 and it included about 58 kilograms of pure silver made into about 270 objects, including platters, spoons, coins, and much more. These precious items would have been given to the emperor's supporters. 
This masterpiece is called the Achilles Dish, and per the museum, it shows the hero as an aristocratic ideal. It dates from about 330 to 340 AD. This huge platter was made roughly at the same time. It was made mainly of silver and has hunting seeds on the rim, while in the central portion, one can see a coastal town, cupids fishing from boats, and marine life. This silver ingot would have been a personal gift from the usurper Magnentius, who killed the previous emperor Constans and then declared himself emperor. However, his rule was short-lived and he died in 353. Some impressive silver spoons. This magnificent candlestick belonged to the tribune Marcellianus. His name was engraved on numerous silver items, including gifts from the emperor. This dish, which dates to 330 to 350 AD, has cupids on the rim, and in the middle is a depiction of Ariadne with her husband Dionysus and a satyr. This dish was a gift from the Emperor Constance to celebrate the 10th anniversary of his reign in the year 342 or 343 AD. Now let's look around the room to see how the museum displays this very significant treasure hoard. Nevertheless, not many objects outside of this treasure hoard from the Roman times are on display. Here one can see several long thin objects, which includes a toothpick with a wine strainer, just a wine strainer, and two toothpicks with ear cleaners. An interesting item is this small silver statuette of Venus. Even though the Roman Empire at the time was officially Christian, they still liked to use pagan motifs. This is another walk around the same room, showing other objects from different angles. This city in ancient times was named after the first emperor Augustus, and the modern city still carries his name. Here are mid-4th century coins minted in Trier, Germany in impeccable condition. This silver medallion shows the emperor Constance on both sides. Interestingly, on the reverse, the emperor is proclaimed triumphant over barbarian nations and shows him in military dress. A coin minted in Rome between 294 and 298 AD by the Emperor Diocletian. Here are more 4th century AD coins uh, minted in Arles and Lyon, France. This one minted in Aquileia, Italy, mentions the victories of our Lord Emperor in the legend. This is a mandible of a woman that was buried between 300 and 350 AD. When I was in Augusta Rarica's museum, there was a special exhibition showing skeletons and uh, burial goods. And it was interesting because a lot of information of how the Romans in that period lived and died was able to be gained from excavating uh, the cemetery. This is a large mosaic found on site showing various scenes of gladiator combat. Unfortunately, it is too large 
to be shown in the museum in its entirety, and therefore normally could, one could only see one small section. However, in 2021, I had the good fortune of visiting Naples, Italy, where they had a special exhibition and one could see the whole work. This is the amphitheater of Agosta Raurica, dating to the late 2nd century AD. Here, gladiator games and animal hunts would have taken place. Also, there were a lot of seating and paintings along the wall that unfortunately one really can't see today. This is a sanctuary next to a bathhouse, although that bathhouse is underneath a field and can't be seen. We don't know exactly how this looked like, but it was presumed that it was used for healing purposes. It was quite nice to see the spring flowers walking around that day. The next item to visit is a long, dark, damp tunnel, which was actually a sewer system. And one walks roughly 100 meters through this to get to a basement of the uh, Roman baths above. Then I retraced my steps going back to the main entrance, past the museum and all the other monuments in order to get in my car and to see a different part of the ruins. Don't make the same mistake as me and think that three hours is enough for the parking ticket. This is the Roman Castel, which is very close to the archaeological site. However, it's actually in a different city in Canton in Switzerland. Uh, this city is called Kaiser Augs, and close to where these pictures were taken, the Silver Horde was found. Various ruins can be found right along this river, which separates Switzerland from Germany on the other side. This Roman bathhouse was closed, but I was able to peek inside through the window. Another building outside the core archeological ruins is this Roman building, which was presumably a restaurant and a commercial building. Uh, it was however, damaged by fire in the late third century. Unfortunately, I couldn't go inside, but I was able to enjoy this ruin through the windows of the protective structure. After a long day with many pictures taken, I treated myself to this watermelon. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.